We now return to Autumn Heart's Curse, Part 3. She finally managed to get everyone to calm down for a moment. Turning to Raindrip, she asked, What is going on here? After a quick examination, she could tell both of them had bite marks and claw marks, but wasn't able to tell who they were from. So she quickly began to clean them both up. She had a feeling that Raindrip was hiding something. So again, she asked, what happened? A young she-cat named Mudpaw entered the den. Seemed like Seaberry finally gave her an apprentice. Thank goodness, she said. It's been so busy. Turning to her apprentice, she spoke in a hushed voice. I'll be back. I'm going to speak to Seastar. Leaping up on the leader's rock, she whispered to Seastar. Seastar, when you have a moment, I would love to talk. She had a weird feeling that something in the camp wasn't right. The Tom nodded. I'll meet you when the time is right. She nodded, but didn't have good vibes from this. Entering the medicine den, it seemed like Raindrip had woken up. How are you two feeling? She asked, looming eyes and Raindrip. I'm feeling good, Raindrip spoke. That's good. You should both heal fully. And if anyone ever needs to speak to me, I'm always available, she said, eyeing Raindrip before eyeing Looming Eyes. Hey, Raindrip, once you get better, could we have a talk outside of camp? Looming Eyes asked. Autumn Heart was startled by this. It seemed too soon for them to be leaving camp. But to her surprise, Ranger responded, I think I can walk, so yeah. The two left the den shortly after, and Autumn Heart finally was able to lay down and rest for a moment. It had been such a crazy few days. After a few hours of resting, she suddenly started to shake and feel her fur stand on edge. Leaping to her paws, she looked over to Mudpaw. I'll, I'll be back. She immediately picked up a familiar scent and began to follow it. Raindrip once again seemed to be knocked out, just lying on a rock. Mudpaw was also here. She must have got a weird feeling too. Mudpaw gently nudged her and tried to get her to wake up, but Raindrip was just silent. Autumn Heart looked around angrily. Something was not right. I don't want to have to drag you if you can walk, she meowed. But still, no noise came from the warrior. <sighs> Mudpaw, we need to carry her. The apprentice quickly dashed off. Juniper berries! We need juniper berries! <sighs> Autumn Heart nodded and laid down next to Raindrip. Within a few moments, Mudpaw returned with the juniper berries, gently pushing them over to the warrior cat. Raindrip very carefully ate them and began to move around. Oh, good. What, what happened? Just when she thought that Raindrip was waking up, she wasn't. And... Her and Mudpaw not argued, but discussed whether it would be better to try to continue healing her here or back at camp. Autumn thought it was worth the risk to take her back where we knew it was safe, but Mudpaw wanted to stay here. I'll sit with her until she wakes up, okay? Mudpaw finally said. Autumn Heart nodded. She needed to get back to camp in case something else was happening. When she came back to the medicine den, Looming Eyes was seemingly looking for something. Sorry everyone, Raindrop won't wake up. Mudpaw is still with her. The sandy-coated Tom's eyes widened as he quickly headed towards the exit. She was very shocked by his response and quickly dashed after him. Silver Cloud approached. What happened? We found her like this. We don't know what's wrong. Looming Eyes 
awkwardly spoke up. Uh, we should get a meeting set up for her loss, you know. And he quickly took off yet again. As she watched Raindrip take her last few breaths, she couldn't help but look up at the sky. Why was Star Clan doing this? Was this all because of her? She decided it was best to go back to camp and tell Seastar what happened. But she didn't see him where he usually is. With a sigh, she left the camp yet again to try to find Seastar. And she heard some splashes quickly walking over. Her eyes widened. It was Seastar. He was in the water. Sakura stepped watching from the shore. Sea Star, what's happening? Are, are you okay? She asked, running over to the water, but his body was simply floating. The deputy looked at her. Sea Star slipped into the gorge. She responded, Oh, Star Clan, no! Star Clan, please! The two cats managed to help pull Sea Star's body out of the water. She knew this wasn't his last life, but to lose a life so early was horrible. <laughs> oh, Sea Star. She curled up next to his body and shed a few tears. Slowly, the leader's eyes began to open again. She smiled. Thank goodness. It's okay. It's okay. It's going to be okay. She tried to comfort him. Sakura stare, I know this is bad timing, but we also lost Raindrop, she said, wanting to make sure she told them. I was coming to try to find you guys to tell you when. Ouch, what happened? Seastar said. Okay, I see. The deputy spoke in a sad voice. Everything's gonna be okay, Sea Star. You seem to be fully healed. And Sakura Stare, can you help Sea Star back to camp? The leader slowly got up. Oh, my neck hurts. Let Mudclaw look him over just to make sure. I'll be there shortly. I want to look for a few more poppy seeds for his neck. Of course the deputy said, raising to her paws and walking over. Sea Star slowly rose to his paws and began to hobble back to camp, his deputy leaning on his shoulder for support. She watched them as they walk away when suddenly Looming Eyes appeared from behind a tree. How long had he been there? Oh, hello Looming Eyes. The much smaller she cat spoke looking up at him. Hello, he said in a seemingly normal voice. Um, would you like to help me? Before she could take a step to go look for poppy seeds, he quickly spoke up. Can we talk? Um, yes, uh, yes, oh yes, um, of course, she said, trying to hide how nervous she was feeling. Looming Eyes walked over to the river's edge sitting down. She nervously joined him and sat next to him. I had an awful dream about my attack. Oh, um, what did you see? She questioned. The warrior looked sad and started to fake some tears, but Autumn could see through his disguise. Something was wrong. Something, something was horribly wrong. Too scared to move or run, she just looks over, trying to act normal. Uh, it's, it's okay, Looming Eyes. For one moment, she quickly looked behind her to see how fast she could run to camp, but when she turned back to Looming Eyes, he had leaped on top of her, pinning her to the ground, and she could feel his claws slashing at her throat. Ah! Please, don't! Then there was silence. Only the trickling of water could be heard. Her blood slowly began to drip into the river. 
as Autumn Heart slowly drifted into forever unconsciousness, she could hear one of her warriors, What are you doing? It seemed that at least Looming Eyes could be stopped now. As he turned to face the other warrior, he attempted to kick her body into the river, but only half made it. The cool water felt nice, and that was the last feeling she would have as everything fades to white. You now see Little Sprout sitting in front of you. Mm, that was sad. That was, I think the first time, other than the, the lost kit, that one of my characters actually like died in role play. Um, yeah, well, that's, that's Autumn's heart, Autumn Heart's first story. Uh, she probably is going to be a more sad character. At least this roleplay was, you know. Who knows about next roleplay with her. Hopefully it can be something less sad, but... oh, I'm sad. I, like, this was a sad roleplay, but okay. I guess, I guess that's all I really have to say. But I hope you guys liked it. If uh, you were in this roleplay, thank you so much for roleplaying with me. Um, don't forget to subscribe, comment, let me know what you thought of the story. Did you know Looming Eyes was a uh, evil murderer this whole time? Or, you know, were you shocked? Let me know. Let's let's talk in the in below. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!